Hello and welcome to Front Runner Motorsport. And I've just watched the Singapore Grand Prix, as I'm sure you have as well. And it was a very, very interesting race. And there's a lot of stuff going on outside of the actual on-track racing. A lot of political stuff to go through. So this might be a little bit of a longer video. But I'll try and be concise and not ramble too much. So let's start with the off-track stuff first. And it does seem like the 2021 championship will never end. Um, so now the budgets have been placed into the FIA's hands with the budget cap being taken into consideration. There's been rumours that a couple of teams have broken the rules, namely Red Bull and Aston Martin. Now, as Christian Horner said, it's interesting where these rumours came from, seeing as only the FIA have this information at the moment and the respective teams, of course. So, if there's some kind of leak in the FIA, or is it something someone's put out, just like rumours, and other teams have latched onto it and have maybe said a bit too much in response. Now, if they have broken the budget cap rules, I think it does call into question how the FIA are policing them because it was always going to be a very tricky thing to police. And I guarantee every single team broke the rules in some way. Um, I'm sure they have people hired and on staff who are there to sort of fudge the figures. I'm sure that goes on in every sport, in every kind of business, everything, even in governments and just everything is dodgy. So I imagine these budgets are all very close to the edge. Now, apparently there's a 5% leniency. So if you break the rules within 5% of the budget cap, you'll get a lenient penalty, like a slap on the wrist, probably a fine or something. But apparently one of the teams has broken the rules by quite a lot. And Toto Wolf opened, well, he came out of his cave, opened his jaw and let forth some bile at Red Bull as usual. And, you know, he suggested they should be penalized. Ferrari came out and said similar things, although not as direct as Toto Wolf. And I'm sure the other teams all had statements and whatnot. But it, the main ones were Toto Wolf and. Is it Biotto for Ferrari? I forget who it was. Christian Horner has five back and said only the FIA has this information. And he actually, well, he suggested that lawyers at Red Bull are looking into these statements from other teams. And if they will or feel they can press legal issues on them, they might if those statements aren't retracted. That suggests that Red Bull are fairly confident they're either within the budget or it's not as bad as people make out. Or maybe there are circumstances as to why. And to have the confidence to suggest legal action, it's going to be interesting when those findings are released. And they are going to be public, although I probably won't read them because I'm sure they'll be very complicated and boring. I might have a look, but I, I'm not going to understand them fully. I'm sure it takes a certain level of expertise and other YouTube channels will probably provide that. And I can see this fight going on for a little while, but there has been a certain section of the Formula 1 audience, and we all know who they are, who have been calling for Max Verstappen to get a points deduction and have Lewis Hamilton declared the 2021 champion, because obviously that money was used to develop the Red Bull car and help him win the championship. I really think they need to let it go. Max Verstappen is the 2021 champion, even if you gave it to Lewis Hamilton. It's always going to be, well, Max Verstappen actually won the championship, but it was given to Lewis Hamilton a year later because of financial reasons. It's better for Lewis not to win that championship now. It's over. It's done. It's finished. You do not want the 2021 Formula 1 World Championship settled in 2024 because it's had to go through 20 different court cases and appeals and whatnot. You don't want lawyers deciding your world championships. So I think a points deduction would be a bad move. Financial, it depends how big. If it's a few hundred thousands, I'm sure Red Bull could write that off and say it's worth it to win a world championship if they have broken the rules. 
So I think the FIA should probably lay out a penalty system in the rules beforehand. Like when they made the budget cap rules, say if you break them up to 5%, it's a financial fine, like 500,000 or something. Over 5%, you get either future points deduction, which I think works a lot better. Although again, for financial things, I mean, it's different to football where a club goes into administration and gets a point deduction because of it. And it's like, well, that doesn't really help the situation. This club is now struggling and you've made things worse. But then how else do you punish them? It's a tricky one. But I think if you're going to do a points deduction, it has to be for the future, not retroactive. Because, as I said, the 2021 Championship is done. It's finished. Just leave it alone. If you're going to do it, do it for 2022 or 2023. Even then, there's reasons why that's probably stupid as well. But I think that's a better way to do it. Even then, do you say it's the driver's fault that Red Bull decided to spend this money? If so, you shouldn't really punish Max Verstappen for that, even if it has benefited him. So maybe a constructor's points deduction. And how you apply that fairly, I do not know, but it's going to be interesting to see what the FIA do. Now, on to the Singapore Grand Prix, because we're already five minutes in and I haven't even mentioned it yet. This was an okay race. It was pretty good. It's nice to see Singapore back on the calendar. It's a track I do quite like, and it does have some historic F1 moments, as they made sure to make fun of Nelson Piquet Jr. in the opening part of the, you know, the bits before the Formula One race starts. I think it's Paul DeResta. Yeah, um, it was 14 years ago. Leave poor Nelson Piquet Jr. alone. It's happened. Stop making fun of him for it. I think I have before, but I think I've got more right to than Paul DeResta. And the race itself, I don't think there's any big shocks in qualifying apart from Max Verstappen. Whatever happened to him, he seemed to bail on two flying laps, but he, I mean, I think he could have got a front row, which would have probably benefited him in this race. There were a lot of incidents and mostly due to the wet track and there was a delayed start as well for an hour which everyone moaned about but whatever we didn't get a full race because we had to run down to two hours nothing major happened off the start i think lewis hamilton lost out to science and verstappen dropped back a few places which he quickly made back up the first incident was Latifi and Guan Yu Zhou. It looked like Nicholas Latifi squeezed Zhou against the wall and he said he didn't see him, but it's yet another Nicholas Latifi incident. And this is the reason he's not going to be racing in Formula One next year, just because of stuff like this. Dumb mistake, ruined two people's races. It would have been interesting to see what Zhou could do because he was right at the back of the field, but a lot of cars exited this race and a couple of cars had bad races. He's been quicker than Bottas, so. I think Joe could have got a point at this race if he had survived that early incident. After that, we saw both Alonso and Ocon retire with issues. Very, very bad day for Alpine because McLaren got some very decent points. And Alexander Albon as well had a crash. He went straight on into the barriers, lost his front wing and retired. So bad day for Williams. And we also saw Sonoda crash yet again disappointing from him i think he's been given a chance by alpha Tori for a contract next year and he needs to start paying that back or 2023 will be his last formula one season so they were all the retirements george russell had a terrible race he went on the slicks a little too early but even before that he wasn't making progress anyway i think he got fastest lap in the end and that's all he has to take away from singapore and his teammate Lewis Hamilton didn't do much better. I think at one point Lewis Hamilton was pretty much set for a podium. I think he would have taken Carlos Sainz. But then he went straight on and hit the barrier. Luckily not as hard as Albon and carried on. But he damaged his front wing, had to pit. Then he got stuck behind Sebastian Vettel. He wasn't making progress until right at the end he tried to pass Vettel. It was 
kind of a desperate lunge, got onto the wet side of the track, went straight on and lost another place to Max Verstappen to finish ninth. A very, very bad race for Hamilton. For, at, I mean, he never really looked like he had the pace to challenge for a win, which I thought in qualifying he might be pushing for with this one. And to only finish ninth and make a couple of mistakes, this was really, really bad. This was an opportunity to catch up with his teammate at least, because Russell was outside of the points. But as it's happened, Mercedes have come away from Sydney Paul with two points, and Hamilton is falling further behind in the race for second. In fact, I'd almost say it's out of his reach. He's going to need some very good results over the last five races. So, Mercedes, I think this is one of the worst weekends they've had this year. And that's with both cars finishing. It's just they were ninth and 14th. As for the other big teams, Red Bull, can't fault Sergio Perez at all. This was a fantastic win. He got it right from the start, took the lead, and he didn't look like losing it. And he pulled out a seven and a half second gap at the end. And now we have a penalty hanging over him as well. And with the safety car infringement, there seems to be some confusion. I think one of the Sky Sports commentators said it was because he drew alongside the safety car to tell it to hurry up. But Ferrari seemed to think it was because he was more than 10 seconds or 10 car lengths behind twice. So if that's going to be investigated, it's a shame we didn't do it during the race and we would know who won. But hopefully he won't be penalised and he can take a really good victory. If not, I'm sure he'll be second because he was quite far ahead of Carlos Sainz. I think he was like 15 seconds ahead. So he should be fine for at least second, but I hope he wins because he really deserves it. Verstappen, he finished seventh in the end. Again, a scrappy race. He dropped down at the start to 13th. Pulled off some great overtakes to get back up to fifth, I think. For, sixth or fifth. Tried to overtake Norris at the restart after the Sonoda crash, and he went straight on. And he came out ahead of Hamilton but decided to pick, so I think he damaged his tyres. Climbed back up the field, past Hamilton, past Sebastian Vettel at the end. Decent enough seventh place, and he's pretty much guaranteed to be champion anyway. But this was definitely scrappy. And if he had won this one, it would have been six races in a row. So it's a little bit disappointing that he didn't do that, but it was still enough to... I don't think... It wasn't enough to clinch the championship, but it's enough that it's pretty much certain. And it does keep Red Bull just enough. Like, they didn't lose too much ground to Ferrari and the constructors at this one. Mostly thanks to Perez's win. But I think getting Vettel at the end was important, and Red Bull are in a strong position. Ferrari, it was a good weekend. They didn't make any mistakes. It's a shame... We didn't get more of a battle between Leclerc and Perez. He was close at one point, but he had a couple of scrappy laps himself. Second and third for Ferrari looked fair on pace. Leclerc obviously might still win if Perez is penalised. But I think they'll settle for second and third. Again, it helps them the constructors. They do claw some points back towards Red Bull. I think the championship is way out of reach for Leclerc now, but... In terms of guaranteeing second place, I think this was a very handy result. Everyone else, McLaren, fourth and fifth, pretty much the perfect weekend for them. I think not many people are expecting a lot from Daniel Ricciardo at the moment. So he mostly just survived and he got lucky that a safety car came out while he was still on Inters. I think the McLaren was the last car on Inters and then Sonoda crashed. That helped him a lot, but Ricciardo still had to be up there. And he got that fifth place. I think it's his best finish of the year. Lando Norris is still doing a fantastic job, as you expect from Lando Norris. So this, with the Alpines not finishing as well, really helps them. Aston Martins, great result for them as well. Sixth and eighth. Fantastic drive from Lance Stroll. I give him a lot of stick, but again, just by surviving, he got into a very decent position. Scored some decent points this weekend. I think Aston Martin will be very, very happy. And the last point scorer was Pierre Gasly. He got 10th. I mean, as far as Alfa Tori performances go, really, that's sort of where they are at the moment. So I'm sure he'll be relatively happy with that. 
Um, for the people who did finish but outside of the points, it was only Bottas in the Alfa Romeo who, since his great start to the season, has really dropped off. And that's probably the fault of Alfa Romeo. But even so, Granu Joe has been outperforming Bottas here and there. And I think he needs to be a little bit worried about that. And the Haas is... Again, it's difficult to know what they are capable of. It was a good performance to see Magnussen in Q3, but he didn't do anything with it. And 12th and 13th, it's not really anything to write home about, but at least they got to the end. As a lot of cars didn't. Now, I think the next race is next weekend, so I don't think we have long to wait. Or oh, it's two weeks, I don't know. I haven't actually looked at the calendar for a while. The championship is very, very interesting. The fight for second is definitely the most interesting part. Perez, Sainz, Leclerc, Russell and Hamilton. I, it's, I'm probably Leclerc from Perez and Sainz, I think, right now, with Russell and Hamilton 5th and 6th. I think that would be a reasonable end to the championship, but I'm sure there's plenty of trials and tribulations for each of them to come, and it'll be interesting to see who can pick up points where. I think one of the other big stories for the last five races as well will be, can Hamilton take a win? because he hasn't yet and it'll be the first time he hasn't taken a win in a season so pressure's on and he can't keep making mistakes like he did today and with that thank you for watching remember to subscribe and have a good one